zeros we want to see numbers on the board um, so we can get into the competition we want all these drivers to be able to go run after run and be that consistent driver that we you know so we can have that great competition yeah uh, coming up next we have Matt Shulman from Orlando Florida and the Kansai wheels Nissan 240SX and uh, what they call the Shulmanator yes indeed we got to have uh, dinner with them last time we we're out here we got to uh, I got to test his I got to test his ability to handle hot sauce, and he just wasn't able to hang. I'm sorry, Matt. You just weren't able to hang with me. <laughs> he has a low tolerance. He, you no, know, he has a pretty good tolerance, but I just I think I outperformed him in the hot sauce competition. Oh, snap. That's right. All right. Matt Shulman out of Orlando, Florida, and his Nissan 240SX, Kansai Wheels, ECU Masters, out here ready to do battle. But first, he's got to get some points on that board. Yeah, it's good to see him out here. He ran into some problems leading up to the event, and he actually had to do some last-minute changes in order to actually get the car together just in time uh, to make it to four qualifying. And away he goes. All right, Matt Shulman working his way down the straight as he makes his way into the initiation point. Oh, right on that last cone Ooh. almost, transitioning into the initiation, making his way through that first outer zone. Now he's going to flick it past that inside clip. Looks like he's got good speed. Let's see how he does. Ooh. Dangerously close to that beginning of the outer edge there of outer zone number two, but doing a great job right in that outer edge is Matt Shulman working his way past that outer zone, taking out a clip, but that's okay. Good job. Yeah. That, I, that, we may have our current uh, points leader in the qualifying right now. Yeah, possibly, but he did have a very odd initiation. It seemed like he just didn't get the rear end like he wanted to, and he fell midline through outer zone one, was able to actually reach the outer edge once he got out of it, and then once he actually got over to outer zone two, did a much better job of following that outer edge of outer zone two, and then once he got into outer zone three, did knock over that clipping point, but I wouldn't say it was a major deduction throughout the course, and if we take a look back, as you see here, just right on the edge. You see that tire just working that edge, and then he just comes off a little early, but that's okay. He do does a better job of dropping in, and uh, we got a score, and it's a nice score. What's the score? 69. 69. 69 for Matt Shulman on his first qualifying run. 69 for Matt Shulman. Yeah, on his look, first look at that. He's happy run. about that. Yeah, in that picture, he looks he looks very happy right yeah. there. So coming up, it should have been Rand. All right, what's up, guys? We have made it to Clutch Shakers round four, kind of. It's been a wild, wild, wild two weeks of trying to figure out the car. Uh, I had a whole video filmed of doing coil packs and all this stuff, and I'll explain it later in the video, but right now I'm very short on time. So basically, right now it's later in the day of Clutch Shakers. This video will be all over the place because we got here and it was really hectic and things last minute and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we're in Clutch Shakers round four. We made it here, uh, and we're having terrible misfire issues again with the stock coil packs. Something in there is just not happy in the harness, um, and we can't figure it out. But I went out and qualified the 69 with a misfiring car. The car was slow as hell, just pedaling around the course, slowed down a good lap to get in the show. We're in the show officially. We drive, uh, qualifying starts at 515, but I might be on the, on the right side of the bracket, which will be way later uh, in the bracket. So I'll have, we have plenty of time right now to figure out the car. So. 
quick story is we spent all day after qualifying trying to figure out what the hell is going on with this car. And multiple people, very smart people, very talented people that know way more than me about this stuff, have dove in the car and tried to figure out everything possible. And everything checks out right. Something in there is pissed off. We can't figure it out. And I was literally gonna call it. So right now I would have been like, this is it. I'm not driving anymore. Here's some footage kind of thing. But as I gave up and made the call, Randy Noah, a good friend of mine in his VR6 BMW, sadly, uh, Blew his engine today and he has the Audi R8 coils for a six cylinder with a perfect harness already made. So the guys right now are over there uh, putting R8 coils into my car and uh, gonna wire it straight to the ECU and uh, hopefully it works. So we'll see. I got Brad and Chaz over here trying to get these Those things to work. We're gonna make a temporary harness to the uh, current harness and uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, it's iffy. We'll see. <laughs> I'm choking now. Days crazy. Well, we're gonna drive. That's a good thing. But this video has been all over the place because we got here, battery was dead, GoPro. <coughs> wow. Anyway, it's been a crazy day. Uh, got here, the battery was dead in the car, lost some practice time. Went out there, the car was not doing what I wanted to do. It was breaking up like crazy. The whole time wasn't the coil packs. Stupid. Whatever. It was injectors. One bad one. Well, what? No one bad. There was really corroded and dirty. So we replaced one. Another one we cleaned as best we could and the car sounds much better. I just did some test hits down the road and it, it's perfect. No breakups, that's perfectly fine. Um, I haven't got much drive time today, but I'm gonna do my best. Hopefully I can win the first battle. In the second battle, I'm gonna go against Conroe Solo and pass the, the first one. So, I'm really excited. I'm ready to drive. Thank you to Brad, Randy, Chaz, Isaac, Jacob, uh, uh, Jackson, Mike Massey, Everybody, but Hans, sorry, so many names. Everybody, everybody who put hands on the car got me back on track today. So I really appreciate it. That's drifting for you. I do it for them too. So it's just one big family of fun and smoke. Let's go drive. I'm excited. So let's do this thing. All right, back while you are on the iPhone, but we're on grid to go battle against Sergio. I'm not sure who he is. I think he has an LS IX200. Uh, gonna go out do the best I can. Hope you take the win and uh, go drive and have some fun and then uh, move on to tomorrow so feeling good the car is good i'll be good and then uh see what happens He's going to lead. Sergio's going to give chase. Both drivers anxious, I'm sure, ready to get this battle underway. And there you go. The staging light is lit, and away they go. Both drivers making their way down the straight. Matt Schulman out front. Sergio not too far behind. Both drivers attacking that first outside zone. Look at Sergio diving in for Whoa. the attack, applying that pressure. Schulman running wide, but holding it together. Sergio's going to try to dive in for the attack again. Can Matt Shulman hold it together in that lead position? Sergio's trying to apply that pressure and force a mistake from Matt Shulman. Matt Shulman's not being phased so far. Great job in that chase position and a great lead run by Matt Shulman. Amazing. That, that, was a great, that was a great run. Yeah, I mean, Matt Shulman just uh, playing with fire there at, throughout, at the end of our zone number one, as you see. Does a better job of just starting off at the edge, but then he just you know bit off a bit more than he could chew and then just walking that fine line of almost losing drift, putting himself in a bad position, but luckily though, he was able to get through and keep the drift going. Yeah, but Sergio though, just not letting that take into account. He didn't fall back. He kept uh, the same proximity throughout the course. As you see another angle from it, Matt Shulman doing a good job of just extending it out to the end of auto zone number two. And 
I mean, one thing though I have noticed is that a lot of the drivers are not struggling through the infield. We've seen, you know. Sergio did a great job in the chase position. So Matt, he's got, whoa, look at Matt diving in for the attack almost right off the bat. And both drivers, as they come out of that first inner, I'm sorry, first outside zone, they make their way past that first inside clip. Both drivers going through that second outside zone. Sergio not as wide as he should be. Matt Shulman right there with them. Both cars transition. Look at Matt Shulman diving in for the attack. Give it up for Matt Shulman and Sergio Hanazono able to just continue attacking Sergio. Sergio though just struggling to hit the markers and just missed the outer zone number two and just uh, Matt Shulman better job in the chase position going up against uh, Sergio. Yeah look at Matt Shulman almost look at oh Ooh. actually it looks like he made a little contact on initiation. Right but it didn't really throw off Sergio so that's very important to take into account. No so Sergio proven to be a, um, a fierce competitor here at the Clutch Kickers. here for his first time throwing down against a clutch kickers veteran in Matt Shulman and proven that he is not somebody to be taken lightly Sergio in, in the chase position did an excellent job applying that pressure almost causing Matt Shulman to go off course too far but Matt Shulman doing a great job holding holding it together staying calm cool and collective but it looks like we do have results slide him left for Sergio Hanazono slide him right for Matt Shulman and it is unanimous. Matt Shulman will take the win. Matt Shulman will take the win, taking out Sergio Hanazono. Unfortunately, Sergio is going to have to call it a weekend. Matt Shulman is going to move on, and it, and we're going to see him in tomorrow's top 32 competition mm -hmm. in that Ken Kansei Wheels Nissan 240SX. <laughs> Okay, so once again, today was insane. The team, well, team and others killed it. Uh, I did three laps today on a car that was like no horsepower. And uh, we made it qualified pretty decently with the Hurt car. And we spent literally all day up until now to get this thing back and running the way it should run. And what so, changes did we make? We uh, did Audi R8 cool packs over on Randy's car, made a new harness straight to the ECU, bypassed the stock harness, and that wasn't even an issue in the first place, which is hilarious. So I spent weeks trying to figure it out, but I was a dork. Didn't check their injectors, but someone told me not to. Whatever. But it ended up being on cylinder one and five. One and five. Yeah. One and five were like not spraying enough fuel. Mm -hmm. So technically they explained. The motor seemed healthy. I had no power loss there. Felt great. Um, so we put one new injector in. Only had one spare. Put one in and then cleaned the hell out of another one and it ran great. So we're good. Temps were good. I had the car a little loose that battle. We went out for the top four battle against Sergio, I think his name, the LS uh, IS300. I had qualified higher, so I led first, did a decent lead, dropped the tire, but like the rest of the run was really good, felt awesome. Um, and then on my chase, I was not giving no gaps. I wanted to win on entry. I hit him pretty good, but stayed in it and just, you know, ate him up the rest of the run. And I'm stoked, the car ran great. Somehow there's no damage to the mechanical part of the car, but the cons I wheels was a good hit, you know. Got a nice little chunk out of there, but that's just, you know, some, some love tap. Battle but, scars. You know, battle scars. Race like, car stuff. Hey, they head up great. Cons eyes are awesome wheels, so, uh, you know. It's because they're silver, yeah. not white. Yeah, that's why I did it. Break. But I'm stoked. Uh, we're over the car tonight. Make sure we're all ready to go tomorrow morning. 
and go, but now we're going against Connor O'Sullivan. Good friend of mine, very fast car, but I'm gonna door his ass too. So we'll see what happens. So see you in the morning. Hi guys, what's up? It is day technically three, but two for me at Clutch Shakers round four. And uh, feeling good, the car feels really good. Finally, we had some issues yesterday with the misfiring thing that I've dealt with for weeks, but we got it figured out because of the injectors. But um, car felt great last night, won that battle. Um, now we have practice at 8.45, 30 minute practice warm up, and then straight into battles. On the right side of the bracket, so I'll be one of the last battles-ish. We're going against, uh, oh, Connor. We're going against Connor Soli. should be a fun battle. Uh, today's a day where the cars get a lot, a lot faster because as it progresses, it gets crazier and crazier. So last night we had the car set up pretty loose, but today it's time to make it faster. Even yesterday when it was loose, it was pretty fast. So today is going to be hooked up. We're going to hook it up for Connor because the car's pretty fast. But I'm feeling pretty confident. We should have some fun. It should be all right. The team's ready. It's early, but we're ready to drive. Let's get to it. Cool. Sully qualifying sixth, Matt Shulman qualifying 27th. Both drivers uh, doing an amazing job throughout the season. Connor O'Sully just 
has shown that his car has been a rocket ship. We've seen him pull out some of the fastest runs around the track in the past. So Matt Schulman's going to have his hands full as they he's going to be in the chase position. Connor O'Sullivan is going to lead. Matt Schulman going to give chase. <laughs> making their way into that first outside. Connor way wide there, but holding it together. Matt Schulman diving in, cutting that line, trying to gain proximity, but Connor O'Sully just pulling away. Whoa, Matt Schulman gaining ground past that first inside clip. Both drivers working their way through that second outside zone, flicking into that final outside zone. Connor filling out that outside zone very well. Matt Schulman finally closing the gap, but Wow, I mean, Connor Sullivan's car is just a rock. Man. It is, but uh, you know, fortunately, it's just he's having some issues throughout the course. So you see here, like midway through outer zone number one, he does suffer a little bit of a correction there, and then it sort of kind of throws him off, but then he's able to get back on the power. And then Matt Shulman is just able to just come back in for the attack. And then as he goes around to outer zone number three, it seems like Connor Sullivan just... Both drivers initiating into that first outside zone. Connor almost right on the back bumper of Matt Shulman as they make their way through that first outside zone. Connor is definitely making his presence felt. Matt Shulman's not phased so far, but look at Connor O'Sully right there with Matt doing a great job riding the complete outer edge of outer zone number two. Both drivers look at Connor diving in, almost colliding with Matt Shulman. Ooh. What a great chase run by Connor O'Sully, but Matt Shulman doing a great job in the lead position. Oh my goodness. So this may come down to, I mean, well, let's take a look back at the replay as you see here. Connor O'Sully just on Matt Shulman throughout the course. Look at the transition going into outer zone number two. Matt Shulman though, just doing a great job filling in that outer zone. And then as they transition over to outer zone number three, Matt Shulman doing a better job through that section as he does not mark, uh, knock over any markers. So, there are, you could say that uh, Connor Sully had a better chase run, mm -hmm. but Matt Shulman arguably had a better lead run. Yeah, yeah. So you're gonna have to judges are gonna have to analyze that. Look at the replays as you see on the screen, watching those replays over. <laughs> Once again, it's one of those days where uh, 
we hurt another motor. And it really sucks because I know all of you guys see all this stuff and you see me hurting motor engines and stuff, but the motor's been good all season from round two until now. It's been great. We just had some dumb uh, injector issues that we 100% fixed yesterday. And uh, it sucks because uh, that lead I did was very, very good. Uh, I, I, I went, in that battle of Conor O'Soli, uh, my chase, I got, I kind of misjudged the uh, entry on him. I fell back a little bit and then had to catch up. And then my lead, I did the best lead run on my whole entire weekend. But as I went to outer three, the car just kind of lost power, sputtered and like kind of like misfired and died. And uh, I don't even want to go film it. I'm just, I'm, I'm tired and upset, but uh, so under three spark plug, it's just, it's just basically melted and smashed and the pistons done so. Uh, it sucks, it happens, no matter what, no matter what you do to these cars, or how you build them, or what ECU, or what, whatever, you're gonna have issues. It's just, it's just what it is sometimes. Uh, the car is feeling really consistent and really fast. Uh, if you look at the bright side, that it, uh, it'll, it'll all come back, we'll all come back next year and do the best we can. But I am done for the season, I'm not driving around five. I'm just gonna take the time to, dial on this thing for next year and uh, continue on. It sucks, but yeah, we lost another motor. Uh, we didn't throw a rod to the block, that's the expensive part. I have pistons out of the previous engine, CP pistons that are the same ones as this. So if all other pistons are perfectly fine and healthy, all I gotta do is take one of the new pistons I have at home and uh, throw it in this motor, refresh it with new bearings and stuff, and then get it ready for next year. Really freaking sucks. Really, really sucks. The, it, it, the injector, the cylinder three injector, uh, is not even one they had, had issues with yesterday. Every, every other cylinder was fine. Uh, the issues, the, the cylinder issues we had with this fine was one in five, and those looked perfectly fine, spark plug wise, piston wise, all the above. But cylinder three is very, very hurt, and it sucks. But I'm out for this round. I'm out for the season. I'm gonna, uh, you know, take my time with it, take it all apart, do a whole entire new fuel system from Dishworks, uh, some new wiring. And some other new goodies too. So, it's time and money. It's just what it is. It sucks. It's drifting. Uh, people in FD, pro cars, all that kind of stuff, still have the same issues I have. It just happens sometimes, but really sucks. But definitely new injectors from Dishworks are going to go in. No more stupid FIC shit. So, uh, yeah, but we, we checked all of them. They were all fine, but I guess something happened. I don't know. It just happens. All right, guys, back home safe and quest shakers round four. A very uh, eventful, stressful, hectic, fun, super fun, not fun event. It was uh, very eventful, if you want to say it like that. But uh, we're back home, and uh, it was didn't start out good. We figured it out. It was going great, and then it was not going great. But uh, the Battle of Connor, uh, actually, you know, it was great for my lead, but I don't know what happened. I kind of just, like, slept on the, my shift. Not leaving the line, like like going up against him, I just didn't like floor it and just bang the gear like I should. I don't know what I was doing. I just had a personal human mistake moment there. But I knew I had to throw down the lead to the best that I could. And then uh, right as I passed the finish line, I heard the motor just lose a cylinder. And I'm like, freak. Like, I knew it could have been potentially something going, like, not the motor, but like, deep down I was like, okay. Like, I can hear it. I know I've done this before, as you guys know. We just lost something, and I'm like, shit. So we checked it, and like I said before, that spark plug in Sword of Three was just done. So uh, we had a copper plugs in there. So thankfully, the, the spark plug took more of the hit than the piston, because usually I run BK iridiums, and uh, that makes it it'll continue to spark and hurt the cylinder more. So uh, it's definitely hurt. I don't know if it's the extent as as before, like the previous times we've done this, but uh, it's not multiple cylinders. It's one cylinder, and the injector failed, and just leaned that cylinder out real quick. And uh, as soon as you have if you're full tilt and it's still sparking with no fuel, it's gonna for sure just toast that cylinder. Now, we have done all the precautions to this car to make this not happen again, like the surge tank and tuning and this and that, wiring, sensors, fail safes, all the above. And everything we did still was working properly, just like when an injector fails, no matter what car you have, no matter what setup you have, unless you have EGTs with fail safes, it's it's something that you can't really control. It sucks, totally sucks. We lost another engine, but again, I was not gonna drive round five anyway. I'm gonna be done after round four either way. And now I'm definitely not doing round five because the engine is hurt, like I said. So it really sucks, but that is the end of the season for us. Uh, this motor was great all year round, uh, clutch shakers and other events and all the above until 
now. But it's, again, it's not an engine thing. It's not an engine problem. It's not an engine catastrophe. It's something supporting the engine, like an injector or wiring or something that would go bad somehow. So it sucks. But before you guys go in the comments and comment, oh, we can't keep Jay-Z's alive. You can't do this. You can't do that. Put a LS in it. Put a this in it. Change this. It's not happening. It's trial and error sometimes. And sometimes the engine is the worst part about it. And it's the most expensive part about it. But once you perfect your setup in your car, you won't have issues ever again. So the plan is now is to, to take a little bit of a break, drive the 240 I have, drive other things, have fun, film stuff on the off season, and uh, make this thing crazier. We have the winter's quick change coming. We have an entire new Dishworks uh, fuel system, which we'll be installing before the next engine goes in. Um, some new wiring stuff. Um, and then just all the goodies are gonna go in this car. And we're gonna pull the motor, I think pretty soon, and uh, just diagnose what happened. If it's that only that one cylinder, I'm literally just gonna rehome that cylinder, put a new piston in it, make sure the head's good, and go back out there and drive. It should be fine. Um, if it's not, we have to tear it all apart again and change everything. But but it is that one cylinder. Every other cylinder looks completely fine That from what we looked at. We never know until you open the motor. So I've done this many times. It's not the first time I've pulled this thing out. It takes an hour to pull the engine. It's not that big of a deal. It sucks. Totally sucks. Very expensive in time. But it happens for a reason. Next year, we'll come back dialed and fast. More horsepower, bigger turbo, winner's quick change, all the upgrades. And we'll be even more competitive than we were this year. I feel like if I have a little bit more car and things a little bit more dialed in, we'll be killer next year. So uh, once again, thanks for watching. We'll be out. Uh, filming again getting this thing taken apart so you guys can see that soon i know i've filmed this like four or five times now of driving and braking and driving and braking and driving and braking i know we're all over it i'm over it it's just like then when you do this it costs a lot of money to fix it so i can't do much other things other builds and other things i want to do so we're gonna get out of it with new injectors and making sure everything's ready to go and we'll get back out there with another engine well uh, same engine just refreshed parts in the motor and we'll be out there again but once again thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys very soon